checkout flight, you get to do all the flying. To make it easier, I'll handle the radios. Let's get out of here before the lunchtime rush. Once we're airborne, I'll fill you in on where we'll go. Molokai ground, Mooney 123, Mike Sierra on the ramp with Lima. Ready to taxi, north eastbound. Mooney 123, Mike Sierra, taxi to runway 5 via taxiway Alpha. Runway 5 via Alpha, 3 Mike Sierra. Okay, release the brakes and turn right onto taxiway Alpha. YouTube, it's Jay Money 1095 again. Uh, today. Not to toot my own horn, but I've lived in Hawaii my whole life, and I used to be a tour guide, so you pick the right guy to fly with. This should be a lot of fun. Hawaii's a beautiful place, and there's no better way to see it than from an airplane. Like I was saying. Better slow down a bit. You shouldn't taxi any faster than you can walk. Like By the that. way, this isn't a test. It's just a chance for you to get acquainted with the local area and procedures. After this flight, you'll be able to rent an airplane from us and fly on your own. Like I was We're saying. We're cleared across runway 1735. So look both ways, then go ahead and taxi across. Okay, let's try this one more time. Like I was saying. Uh, this is another video of me doing one of the FSX missions. This is the Hawaiian checkout flight. Uh, today we're going to be flying in the, the Moon and Bravo, and I'll be yeah, fly, flying around, doing some stuff. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it is a proc estimated flight time of 50 minutes to complete the mission, so we'll see how that works. I'll probably follow the guy's instructions and do the full length of the flight. So, uh, otherwise, the other thing you can do is just fly straight there, but we'll see some landmarks on the way. Okay, stop here and I'll get our takeoff clearance. Molokai Tower, Mooney 123, Mike Sierra, ready to go. Runway 5. Mooney 3, Mike Sierra, cleared for takeoff. Wind 049er at 7. Cleared for takeoff. 3 Mike Sierra. All set? Let's go flying. Take off and maintain runway heading. Rotate at about 65 knots in this airplane. So here we go. Um, let's see. 
This must be Maui. Or, no, Oahu. Whichever one on the loose I think that's... Cliff said the guy was talking about. And then there's this uh, little airport down here. This is. Papa Hotel Lima uniform, which I'm not sure what airport that is, but that works too, so we aren't going to land there, we're just going to fly over it. So I was just in Hawaii a couple days ago, or, uh, over Christmas vacation a couple weeks ago, and uh, we went to Kauai and the Big Island of Hawaii. So we didn't come to this island. Uh, I don't think so. No, we didn't. This is, yeah, this must be Oahu. So. Let's uh, turn and fly up the coast here. It'd be nice if um, Flight Simulator X had. <coughs> It'd be nice if Flight Simulator X had some nicer cliffs than just. Um, well, that, but, I mean, kind of limited in the options, so, I'm sure there are some add-ons that you can get for Hawaii and Hawaiian Islands, I mean, like, uh, in Microsoft Flight, it has really nice scenery and stuff, but it's only for Hawaii, and it has, you have to pay for more aircraft, which is dumb. It's kind of trivial compared to like Flight Simulator X and that stuff. So today, this is the uh, G1000 cockpit. There's two versions. I have the Microsoft Flight Simulator X Deluxe Edition. So whenever there is a mission with a along this coast are the highest sea cliffs in the world. The tallest ones are 3,600 feet above the water. There have been a lot of theories about the North Shore of Molokai, but geologists now think that the cliffs were sculpted by waves. Whatever it was, the result is pretty spectacular. And you can't see it unless you're on a boat or on an airplane. Yes, this aircraft is the G1000 cockpit, which it only comes in the Flight Simulator X Deluxe Edition. Um, I'm sure you can get an add-on for the standard edition. If you have the standard edition, you will be flying in the standard Mooney Bravo. Whoa, didn't see that guy there. That was kind of close. There he is right on the map here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but that blip there. Maybe I should pay better attention. That was really close. OK, 
Okay, so there's some humpback whales here. They're just right here. Oh, there. Yeah, you got a pointer pointing to them. Um, there's one up here that might be a boat. Oh, there's one there. Maybe. Oh, there's some there. Right up at the tip of the right, right wing. There's one. Right out in front of the plane. There's a whale. Right under the arrow. Yeah, see him? He's right underneath the plane there. You can just see his back. Oh, he just jumped. There's a couple of them there. Oh, see that? He jumped again. Okay, well, we're going to leave these whales and continue on our flight. This way. Wind tunnel. The trade winds blow in and speed up as they get squeezed between the mountains. McGregor Point at the south end of the valley is often the most turbulent patch of sky in the islands. So that's that valley there that he was talking about. And we're a little off course. We're going to follow the GPS course that he's set. I just have a uh, altitude hold so that way I don't have to concentrate as much and I'll probably slow down a little bit. If you want to see Haleakala in the observatory on top, you'd better start climbing now. The mountain tops out at 10,000 feet above sea level. Is that... That one there? Must be... Yes, let's go there. So then let's uh, just... That's my dog barking, that you can probably hear there. 
And if you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, that that you might hear when I stop and start talking is TeamSpeak. I have the mic, the mic clicks turned on, so that's just what that is. If you're wondering, I forgot to mute my microphone and sound before I started recording, but I don't know. It makes sense. We're in an airplane, so it sounds good. Well, you gotta love the detail of the uh, default FSX cockpits. I tell ya. There's the observatory. Right up there, you can see a little white dot in this direction here. Yeah, you. So now we're just gonna fly straight for that there. And I think we might want to increase our rate of climb a little bit. I'll go 1,000 feet per minute. For some reason, my aircraft is wanting to veer off to the left. GPS route just flew out there to that little atoll down in this area right there. It's gonna say something about the atoll and how it was like the lip of an old volcano or something like that. But instead we're just gonna go right up to this uh, mountain here. Also, if you fly over this valley, I think it'll say something about how if the sea level were to rise like a foot or something, and this would be underwater, something like that. How it's really, maybe that's what this valley was. And it was talking, they must have been talking about that valley. Because it gets squeezed through there. See, I thought they were talking about the one back there that we flew over. So, I guess this one would make a lot more sense because it's much larger and much lower. It doesn't have a mountain ridge through the middle. We gotta go right. some zigzagging as we climb because we're going to have to drop this down to 700. I don't think we're going to be able to make it up over the mountain just straight like this. In fact, I know we're not going to be able to.
So one thing that I have noticed is that since I uninstalled and reinstalled FSX, is it's running much smoother. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but like uh, in one video I uploaded where the last one where the PAE-146 landed at, what was it, Philadelphia? Sun Sky Jet thing, something like that. Yeah, that one. I was getting like eight, around 8 frames a second. Now I'm Mount Haleakala 20. rises to an elevation of 10,000 feet. Yeah, that one I was getting approximately 8 frames a second, and now I'm getting anywhere between 20. Here, we can show you. Uh, right now I'm getting 720.1, 17, it's kind of jumping around. And uh, most of this is just for caused by the recording. Usually I'd be getting mm, 26s, I have the target set at 26, so it won't go above that. up to the observatory and we are going a little bit slower as we get higher in altitude and I'm just going to go like this and, uh, oops, I don't know how to control the mixture from there Here's the observatory. Old night, so they called it Haleakala, or House of the Sun. These days it's a great place for stargazing. There's an observatory on its highest ridge. The view is unmatched, since at 10,000 feet it's already above one-third of the Earth's atmosphere. So that there's the observatory. This is Hana Airport up here. what this is pointing to down here. Because that's not hot airport, I know that. Oh, this is the crater. I see. Now we can start our descent. Let's go like this in five. So there's the crater in here. Now we're in the crater of this volcano. Oh boy. Oops, the daisies don't really go down that much. There's Hana Airport. Now you're going to see the Hana Highway here in a few seconds. There you can see it there just off, up above the right wing. You can see it running parallel-ish to that. And then the guy's going to give a little commentary on that in just a bit. So we're just going to descend down to that. And then that'll help us line up with the Hana Airport over there. We turn off the compass. Have just the compass or that. I just think the compass helps you guys, viewers, see what to look at or the mission pointer. So this is the whole Hana Highway. When we were in Hawaii, there was a guy that had a Hana Highway, or they drove the Hana Highway. A t -shirt, they, he had a t-shirt that said they drove the Hana Highway. Yeah. It, was, it had like all, how many switchbacks and all that stuff. But you guys will, can just listen to this guy's commentary. It's actually a pretty good little commentary that this uh, FSX dude has. So as you can already 
you see it's got like I think it has close to 200 switchbacks I'm not exactly sure 215 or something like that anyways it's got a lot of switchbacks alarm going off saying my throttle is pushed too low and I should lower my gear. I don't want it over speed so I'll put up the uh, rinky dinky spoilers here that don't seem to do a whole lot. The Hana Highway from Kahului to Hana is right down there. It's 52 miles long, has 600 hairpin turns and 56 one lane bridges. I know, I've counted. Yeah, so, there you go. So, yes, that spoilers were successful in slowing us down. Little rinky-dinky spoiler thingies there. Actually, they look like little flags that go up. They seem pretty pointless. Don't seem to do a whole lot. Got a nice couple switchbacks through there. So now we're just going to turn here and fly up the coast. So the airport is only uh, 9 To drive the highway takes almost three hours, which is why, unlike the rest of Maui, Hana has remained a pretty sleepy little town. We'll cover the same distance in about 15 minutes. Yeah, so like he said, we're going to cover the same distance in 15 minutes. It would take to th drive three hours, I think I said. So... Mm. I grew up just outside of Hana, right down there. My dad drove me to school every day along the Hana Highway. Right down where? Back there? I know. Okay, so... Approaching the Hana Airport. We hope you have enjoyed your time today flying with us on uh, Blue White Stripe Air. Yeah, we'll go with that. Please now take your seats and fasten your seat belts and ensure that your tray tables are in the upright and locked position. The flight attendant will be coming around to collect any service items very shortly. And we ask that you please turn off any portable electronic devices now at this time. So that means uh, you two, maybe three, no, the back one's a storage space. That's Hana Airport up ahead. If you think it's beautiful here, you're not alone. Mark Twain, Jack London, and Charles Lindbergh all fell in love with Hana. In fact, Lindbergh spent the last years of his life in Hana, and his grave is right around here. The locals get annoyed by all the airplanes circling it, so let's just head for the airport and land. As you approach the airport, slow to 140 knots or less and lower the landing gear. You can use the speed brake if you need to get down in a hurry. Lower the flaps as you continue slowing. You want about 75 knots on final. Ooh, that sounds a little rusty, that landing here does. Now there are a couple trees at the beginning. 
beginning of the runway, so I'll have to watch out for those. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make a steeper approach than normal. clear those trees. I just have to use this view so I can see these trees because it is a fairly short runway. I have to nose dive in here. Yeah, I guess I didn't really need a taxi all the way down there. So, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please uh, like or leave a comment. I'm thinking about maybe starting a series where I film the FSX missions like I'm, like the last couple of videos that I put up. And uh, to help, maybe help you guys get through it. A mission that you might be stuck on or something like that. So, leave a comment of what you think. And as always... Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. So, have a good day. And... Well, you did a great job. All checked out as far as I'm concerned. Let's grab a bite in town, then we'll head back to Molokai. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.